And how about this? We're just going to get up real quick, show around what's going on, although yep. it's going to get windy, so I don't know how much uh, we're going to be able to talk here. All right, cool. Uh, um, I found Anna Marie here in a bush. <laughs> now we just had to get out of the wind a little bit to find a better spot for our interview because it is 11 city, city tour week. September. September for the 11th time. 12th, 12th, 12th annual. 12th annual. Yeah. It brings back some memories to me because I was sitting at a trade show booth back in 2010 when the blonde lady from Holland approached us and we were just sitting there, you remember that? Yep. And she was looking for support for a race that she just started and wanted to make more public and, and we just tried to become SUP distributors and producers, which we evidently did not. Uh, that's a different story. And uh, that's where it kind of all started for me with the stand-up magazine and that's kind of where your race in 11 city tour took off from and, and how was the last 10 years we can recap the last 10 years here yeah a bit. yeah uh, 13 years for me but the, he had a recap oh my gosh i think the vibe pretty much stayed the same as in go hard go however you can whatever the conditions are uh, people tap into these reserves that they don't even know they have mm -hmm. So mentally uh, and spiritually, it's always an awesome event. And then, yeah, the people, the camaraderie, yeah. the friendships. Yeah. Every year, it's a different year. The boards have changed a bit. Mm -hmm. But the vibe and that sportsmanship and that Ohana feeling that has been created from day one is still there and going strong. Yeah. And then how, how do you think has the race developed over the last 13 years along with the sport? Has it... Has it gone its own way or kind of like pretty much in correlation with the development of the sport or well I mean the sport has compare? become a lot more professional so the racers have become more uh, professional we had to switch some things in the logistics so the, the first people would start last and the uh, slowest people would start first yeah to be able to manage this because everyone started paddling a lot faster yeah uh, we've started to do time trials like the um, bicycle cool. uh, Tour de France so because it's kind of standard paddling of Tour de France with all the long stages oh, totally. um, so it's fun how we've kind of incorporated some stuff so not only drafting uh, is a thing that used to be the only way of like competing together uh -huh. and with the um, time trials the individual strength of the paddler really gets tested interesting and on that note since we're talking about Tour de France that kind of stage races really big in cycling we see like these eco challenge races where people go in stages and it's actually think I'm thinking this is still a format that harbors a lot of potential for other countries, other waterways, but for some reason, I feel like the only known race is the 11 city tour that is out there that does that. Maybe that one crazy race that Bart and Chris uh, keep doing there up in the Yukon, yeah. but kind of like an everybody uh, participate kind of stage race. We haven't really seen that really like taking off like so many other things in, in, in SUP like river stop is a thing that I'm still missing having taken off. Do you think do you think the logistics are too hard for or, or what's um, you know it's in the Netherlands uh, there's a lot of commitment that goes in there in there financially the training um, we have the non-stop edition as well in which is event, crazy which crazy, is crazy. <laughs> and did it for the first time last year and how many miles did you go non-stop uh, the same so over 200 kilometers 220 so. kilometers is that the right distance to a have that less. right there yeah and then it's about 134 miles okay and you do that um, What's the finishing time there? I'm not. I did 35 on. and a half hours, but the no first sleep. This guy, the, the guy that won yesterday, uh, Nick van der Linde, did it in 25 mm -hmm. hours and 13 minutes. But he was really close to 24 hours last year. So 
that is the time you can do it if you're a freak. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. And then no other country better than Holland to do uh, races like this. Yeah. These guys have so many, so many waterways. And it's kind of a safe way. We don't have bears that will eat you like the, like the yeah. Yukon. <laughs> uh, it's like the Hawaiian oceans are crazy yeah. at times. So it is, a, it is a gentle and a friendly introduction because you can almost yeah. reach the whole water uh, ways by car yeah. and that's part of the fun you can find a cafe have a coffee have yeah. a pancake be part of the race so it's not only the paddling it's the supporters it's the music around it's it everything it's everything it's like a, it's a whole experience yeah so let's uh, wind back the history real quick um, 13 years ago if I'm not mistaken and I looked this up Anne Marie was the first European person to have participated in the ever so famous M2O if I'm not mistaken what year was that uh, 2008. 2008. Yeah. So pretty much the same year you started. Got... I did everything in that year. I downwind it for the first. I stand a paddle in the waves for the first time. I downwind it for the first time. Then I teamed up with Devon, and I did nice. the Molokai to Oahu. I did Maui to Molokai, and then I did the Eleven City Tour. I was just on a mission. And how do you how do you start the Eleven City Tour? Did you just go paddle it by yourself real quick to see figure it out how this could be or? It was, was my wish there? because I'm born there mm -hmm. and the ice skating race was so phenomenal and such a big wish for me to do. I did not finish at windsurfing, so that was unfinished business. And then I started training with my mom, started mapping uh -huh. out the stages and I figured five days would be a good way to break up the race. Okay. And uh, yeah, with the, with the map in the hand, there was no Google Earth or map yeah. or whatever. So I would just go the wrong way and, and come back. And come back. <laughs> So you did it and um, kind of like at that stage when we met at that ISPO, where were you at with this? Did you have already like people? Yeah, yeah. We had at 2010, we had, that was the second year coming up that it was for the public. Mm -hmm. The first free year to enter. It was the uh, individual athletes, but also the teams mm -hmm. became a thing for the first year. And that was also to lower the, the drempel, <laughs> the boundary. Okay. For, for people to do it if yeah. you're like hey i can do uh, 30 miles one day but not five days mm -hmm. then you can make a team and still be part of it and maybe you get pushed for the next year to do it all by yourself very cool very well it's a, such a such a neat such a neat history and such a cool race really yeah. like sadly i don't make it to europe too often but it's some, certainly something uh, i saw a lot of pictures coming up mr chris parker came out of yep. semi-retirement yeah I know. for your race there showing all these great pictures and uh, such a such a picture place to, to do it he's part of the family yes so many so sadly i have not had the opportunity to go to europe in september yet and uh, yeah, yet uh, and do it but hopefully at uh, this touring thing um, I really hope we see more people uh, inspired with this and, and going there's so many places you can do it particularly in Europe yeah. with rivers yeah yeah and it's uh, it's still really good for the body it's good for the mind it's good for the spirit we understand the paddling it's yeah. even on an emotional level you work your left and your right and yeah. it's, you feel always so much better i love surfing waves but once i do my hourly training or anything a little bit endurance i feel different and i think especially in this COVID time and it's such a great way to stay in shape to stay healthy to have a yeah. positive mindset so it doesn't matter what year it is just go out there and just, be amongst nature and recharge just, and get just, strong and do it and uh, how many just last few uh, numbers real quick uh, how many people do we have this year this year under a hundred under a hundred it's, it's hard to travel hard to travel there yeah which is amazing but i see like uh, we're uh, so lucky we have to go we can yeah, do it by the government yeah. so we just want to make it safe uh you know trying really hard with the social distance yeah. keep the mask up where needed and so yeah very cool well here you have it sop 11 city tour 13 years in the make uh, that's remarkable. I want to also say the one remarkable part that I just kind of came to my mind is it's one of the longest standing races there is. I can't think of another race that has survived that long. Molokai to Oahu has been around for that long, I want to say for sure. Uh, everything else kind of sadly sort of kind of died off. We have some German races that have been around for uh, 10 years that I can think of. But internationally spoken, I, you know, that's another endurance statement right there. 13 years in the make and then no end in sight. So with this, I say uh, congratulations, Anna-Marie. And uh, the team uh, for in Holland, who is 
continuing it and making it happen and, cool. and it's a big team effort. Very cool. And, and hopefully uh, one day we'll can do a little team there and maybe I'll get to do it myself. And, and today, uh, which is pretty cool, I'm not there, we can't make it there, but yes. we can do a cleanup. Yes. Sup 11 green, that's why I have this beautiful ugly uh, glove. We've been you cleaning up that. here. We give back to Mama Nature. Yeah. We don't only take by being on the water. We give back by the cleanups. Yeah. We give back by free awesome. stand paddle clinics. So do it, people. And how about this? We're just going to get up real quick, show around what's going on. Although yeah. it's going to get windy, so I don't know how much uh, we're going to be able to talk here. But with this being said, thank you guys for watching this video. Let's see. This is what these awesome people are doing here. They're cleaning up the kids. Anyone